Belfast and Cardiff here area it's in the main major cities in the rest of the UK. Um, but it had two particularly severe raids. One in April, the 15th, 16th of April 1941, and the other on the 4th, 5th of May 1941. As a consequence of the, in total, four raids, a thousand, over a thousand people, military and civilian, were killed. 56,000 houses were destroyed or damaged. And uh, over half the public elementary schools in Belfast were destroyed or damaged. As a consequence of the fear and panic generated by the raids, 220,000 people fled from Belfast, uh, by, had fled by the end of May 1941. At the time of the Blitz in the spring of 1941, Belfast was surprisingly undefended and unprepared. Surprisingly because Belfast was, you, will, you would have thought, an obvious um, target for the Luftwaffe, given the size of its port, the fact it was an admiralty base, uh, and also it was becoming increasingly important as a military base. 17,000 British troops were based there. So it is surprising it was, uh, relatively speaking, un 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 undefended and unprepared. The reasons for that are explained in the book. Uh, one aspect which is looked at is who made the key decisions about, for example, the allocation of anti-aircraft guns, of fighter aircraft, uh, of barrage balloons. Uh, was it in London or was it in Belfast uh, that those key decisions were made? By the end of 1940, uh, Stormont ministers were becoming most increasingly uneasy at the prospect of Belfast being attacked. And there are several reasons why that was. Partly it was because Belfast was becoming, becoming gradually more, more significant in itself, making a more important contribution to the war effort. But also it was because the Luftwaffe were increasingly targeting the western ports, places like Liverpool, Glasgow, Bristol. So it seemed almost inevitable that Belfast uh, turn would eventually come. But a further reason was that the Luftwaffe were increasingly being spotted over, over Belfast, overhead. Between the October of uh, 1940 and the first air raid in early April 1941, there were over 20 uh, red alerts in Belfast, which was indicative of the increasing volume of Luftwaffe traffic overhead. The um, first raid took place, sometimes referred to as the, the dockside raid. The book goes through each of the four raids in some detail. The first was the dockside raid, sometimes referred to as the wee raid in Belfast. And it was a wee raid by uh, the standards of those that followed. Um, at most there were eight Luftwaffe aircraft overhead at any one time. They attacked for about three to half to four hours. The surprising thing is perhaps that <coughs> the, the raid in, uh, over the UK as a whole was a massive raid. There were actually 500 Luftwaffe aircraft set out from their bases in northern France and in Holland. And <coughs> an effort raised the issue as to why such a small number came to Belfast. Was Belfast actually a primary target, a designated target, when they left their bases? Or was it the fact that there was bad weather over Britain, particularly over Clydeside, and that they diverted and go over to Belfast, basically straight across the RAC? The book considers that uh, issue in some detail. When people think of the <coughs> Blitz, they, t they, they think of the Easter Tuesday raid. It's the one which is most vividly remembered. It was the first time that the Luftwaffe attacked Belfast as their major target. It was the night of 15th, 16th April. It was attacked by 180 aircraft over a period of about four hours. And um, the surprising thing about the whole pattern of the raid was the extent to which it focused on North Belfast. North Belfast had no um, bases or no uh, areas of significance in, mil in, in military terms, it was primarily working class houses, den densely populated, fragile. And the, of course, there's been a great deal of speculation since as to why North Belfast should have experienced the brunt of the raid. The most popular view expressed at the time and uh, by, uh, by the people themselves and also by uh, government officials was that the Luftwaffe mistook the waterworks um, for the docks and therefore they bombed the area basically south and west of the waterworks, which in other words was the, basically the Antrim Road area. Um, and there may be some truth in that, uh, though I think there are other reasons that, which are covered in, in, in the book as to why they 
uh, we were unsuccessful in hitting the docks. The docks more or less escaped entirely. Uh, nothing of military significance in the docks sustained significant damage. Um, an interesting issue or a sidelight on whether they mistook the, the water works for the docks or not is to look at the Luftwaffe reports themselves. What did the crews think when they returned to base and submitted their reports? And basically the crews in their reports described the raid as being inconclusive. They were well aware that they had missed their primary targets. They th stated that the raid would be abortive, it had been abortive, that it would be ineffective. Only minimum, of, minimum results could be expected from it. And that would suggest that they knew they'd bombed something, they weren't clear what they'd bombed, but they had a very clear idea that they hadn't hit the targets that they'd hoped to, to hit, the primary targets, in other words, Harland Wolf, the dock area, shortened Harlands, etc. The uh, death rate from the Easter Tuesday raid was ex extraordinarily high. 740 civilians were killed. Um, and the reasons for that are sort of in many ways very obvious, the fact that so many bombs fell in densely populated areas of housing, the fact that so pe few people had evacuated, um, the fact that the city had too few shelters. But in addition to that, a further factor, which is mentioned by many diarists at the time, was the lack of defences. Um, midway through the raid, about 1.45, the anti-aircraft guns fell silent. And that caused a great deal of speculation at the time and frustration and irritation. Uh, the reasons for that, there was a great deal of speculation. Did the guns overheat? Did they run out of ammunition? Uh, did the air, uh, German aircraft bomb them? Uh, now I've considered this in some detail in the book and there are, there's a much better and more convincing alternative explanation than those. The <coughs> next major raid was the 4th, 5th May, a Sunday night three weeks after the Easter Tuesday raid. And on this occasion, Belfast was attacked by an even larger number of Luftwaffe aircraft, about 200 aircraft, which dropped uh, 240 tonnes of bombs and a massive 100,000 uh, incendiary bombs, three times more than the Easter Tuesday raid. On this occasion, the attack was shorter, more intense, perhaps two, to half, two and a half to three hours it lasted. Uh, and in that period, from the very outset, the bombers were successful in hitting their primary targets. They pretty much pulverised uh, the shipyards hard on the wolf. They also hit successfully short in Harlands and various other strategic targets within the city. They also uh, inflicted a good deal of damage on the commercial heart of Belfast, uh, the city centre, and also areas of North Belfast. So in other words, they did hit their key targets. A surprising thing then is that <coughs> given the fact that there was a greater weight of bombs dropped on this occasion than had been the case on Easter Tuesday, uh, how it was that the death rate was substantially lower, uh, roughly 190 civilians were killed. After the attack, the Luftwaffe um, uh, reported back to their bases and uh, the German media um, greatly um, they greatly focused on the Belfast raid. It's the first and only time in the war Belfast hit the headlines in German radio and uh, in the German press. There were six uh, German radio reporters aboard the various Luftwaffe aircraft when they flew over. And the Luftwaffe claimed uh, in the reports, and this was also uh, reflected in the uh, descriptions given in the German media, that Belfast had been devastated, that had been destroyed beyond recovery. Many people in Belfast at the time would have accepted those, uh, those conclusions. Uh, the book analysed the extent to which that was the case. There was a, a final minor attack the following night, the night of uh, 5th, 6th May, when three aircraft came over. And on this occasion there are German reports of that attack which indicate that it was a, a, a planned attack designed to uh, hit further civilian morale in Belfast. The book, the book also considers other aspects of the Blitz. It sets it in a wider context. For example, uh, did the Blitz have any impact on relations between North and South? Uh, it's sometimes suggested that the willingness of the South to send fire engines north on two occasions after two big raids uh, helped to help uh, quell the fires in Belfast. 
and the fact that it opened its doors to floods of evacuees crossing the border, that that would have, would have improved North-South relations. Um, <coughs> there's one significant possible repercussion uh, of the attack, and that is that it did result in the bombing of Dublin, but the Germans became ir irritated by these uh, obvious breaches of southern neutrality. The book also considers, for example, the impact of the raids on um, intercommunal relations within Northern Ireland and on the relationship between Westminster and Stormont. The, the Blitz has been described as the most disastrous event in the history of Belfast. Few could argue with that. It was unprecedented, it, it was unparalleled. Uh, it, unprecedented not only in the history of Belfast but also in the history of Ireland. I feel and hope that this the 75th anniversary of the Blitz will result in the setting up or erection of a permanent Blitz memorial, hopefully in the grounds of City Hall. Um, memorials of this nature have been built in numerous British cities. They've been built, the one has been built in Dublin, uh, in uh, the Merino area of Dublin, uh, in relation to the North Strand bombing, German bombing there in late May 1941. And also, of course, there is the Titanic Memorial in Belfast and Donegal Square East uh, in the grounds of the City Hall. My hope would be that a comparable or parallel memorial would be erected to the Blitz victims in Donegal Square West in the area of the Cenotaph. The contrast between the Titanic and the Blitz victims is, or at least a striking contrast, is that the uh, Titanic victims, 1,500 of them, just about 10 or perhaps less, were from Belfast. Whereas with the Blitz victims, over a thousand of them, virtually all, all of them were from them.